How to pick a Cappadocia hot air balloon company. Here are 12 questions to ask when booking a Cappadocia hot air balloon ride. If you're coming to Cappadocia, you're probably planning on taking a hot air balloon ride. But with 25 companies, how do you choose? Perhaps you just let your hotel or travel agent decide for you. For those of you who are making the decision yourself, these 12 questions will greatly ease your burden. One problem is that you'll most likely only do this once in your life which means you have nothing with which to compare your experience. How do you know if your flight was better than another flight? You don't. In addition, you are laying down a hefty chunk of change. Advertised prices range from 150 to 175 euros for a one hour flight. How do the companies justify this price differential? And is it worth it? How much is a once in a lifetime bucket list experience worth to you? How you and the balloon company answer each of these 12 queries will determine what kind of adventure you will have and how much you'll pay. One disclaimer. The goal of these questions is not that you will choose a certain company, but rather that you'll be able to make an informed decision. Only you know your values. My hope is that through these questions, you'll be able to pick the company that most closely reflects your values. Number one is the pilot. How much experience do they have? How fluent is their English? And what about their personality? Are they talkative or quiet? This is probably one of the most important factors influencing your floating adventure. Of course, the best pilots demand higher salaries. One way companies can save money is by using new pilots. Generally speaking, experience matters for Cappadocia balloon ride. In many areas of the world, a balloon ride consists of reaching a high altitude and getting a wonderful panoramic view of the region. Cappadocia, however, the heights should only make up a small portion of your flight. The best pilots will go high and then spend most of the ride dipping in and out of the valleys. Is it important to you that your pilot speaks your native language? Most of the pilots speak English, but not all at the same proficiency. This affects instructions that need to be given, answers to questions you may have, information about the area, and your general ability to connect relationally with your pilot. If this is important to you, ask about the English level of the pilot you'll be flying with. You can ask which pilot speaks the best English or whichever language you prefer and request to fly with that pilot. Also, if you are a people person, a gregarious pilot makes for a more enjoyable ride. I've had a few different experiences. On my first flight, the pilot regaled us with stories from his many years of experience and kept the mood calm and upbeat with helpful information about the area we were traversing on our flight. He then continued to entertain us while we were drinking champagne after landing. On my second flight, our pilot barely spoke the entire flight. On my third flight, the pilot was friendly and had excellent English, but did not offer much information unless asked. All three flights were enjoyable, but the experience was quite different. Think about what you want and then ask for the appropriate pilot. Number two, how big is your basket? How many people you travel with impacts the price. My understanding is that small baskets hold 12 to 16 people and the large baskets have a capacity of 20 to 28. You can imagine that standing in a corner of a basket with three people is better than being crowded next to five or six. How much would you pay for this advantage? Is it worth 20 to 30 euro? Third is the length of the flight. 60 minutes or 90 minutes? The 90 minute flight is going to run you up to 80 euros more. Do you have to have the newest gadget? Do you only drive late model cars? Are you competitive? Do you want to separate yourself from the masses? If the answer is yes, you may want to seriously consider the 90 minute flight. I have only done 60 minute flights, but on my second flight, we had to go farther afield to find a place to land, and we ended up being in the air for 90 minutes. The extra 30 minutes had a significant impact on the experience. But given my budget limitations, I would not have paid for it. In other words, it was not worth it to me, but it may be to you. Also, be aware that some companies offer 60 minute flights, meaning that one hour is the maximum. They may land at 50 minutes if it looks like waiting will put them further afield. Other companies make 60 minutes the minimum. Ask about this if it is important to you. Number four is navigation, high or low? I mentioned this before, but it needs its own consideration. The more experienced pilots mix it up, 
but they'll spend more time in the valleys giving great views of the fairy chimneys in rainbow-colored Tufa Hills. As I watch balloons fly by our house every morning, I notice that some stay high while others are going up and down. Ask the company what their practice is on this feature. The reality is that most companies understand this and encourage their pilots to mix it up. You may want to ask this question just to see how they answer and try to read between the lines. Number five, what kind of breakfast do they serve? Some companies offer a delicious full buffet Turkish breakfast before the flight. Others provide a basic breakfast of tea or coffee and a breakfast roll. Is this important to you? How much is it worth? Asking these questions will give you an idea of how much the companies think their guests value these things. Which do you prefer and how much is it worth to you? Number six is takeoff area flexibility. The winds in Cappadocia change regularly. Some weeks the wind blows a different direction each day of the week. The different companies have more or less flexibility as to where they begin their flights depending on the size of their fleets. More balloons equals less flexibility. This may or may not affect your experience. If the wind is normal, south to north, then takeoff flexibility is not as important. But if, as is often the case, the wind direction changes, flexibility could mean seeing valleys and ferry chimneys versus plain open fields. Most of the companies have a good bit of flexibility, although some of the bigger ones are a bit limited. You can ask about this and see what they say. I have found that some companies use their flexibility to distance themselves from the other balloons in the area. Number seven is transport vans. All of the companies will pick you up and drop you off at your hotel. I have found that most of the companies use comfortable vans, but only a few use branded vans. In other words, their company name is prominently shown on the van. Why is this important, you may ask? It probably does not seem important until it's 5 a.m. and a few different vans show up at your hotel to pick up different people, and you're not sure which is yours. That may be stress you do not want to deal with. I have heard of a few people who got in the wrong van and ended up at the wrong company. You don't want this to happen. Another issue here to ask about is whether the van drivers speak English and whether they have a list of names of the people going with their company. This is rarely an issue but can give an added bit of comfort as the time for your pickup approaches. If this is important to you, ask about it. It's another feature that can affect the price. Number eight is the waiting area. Where will you wait for your balloon to be made ready in the morning? This is more of an issue if you're here during the colder months. Most companies allow you to wait in their facilities and then transport you to the balloons right as they are ready. Other companies will take you straight to the balloon and you will wait there while they are filling it with the hot air. All the companies arrive before the balloons are full, but some arrive earlier than others. You may enjoy watching the whole experience of filling the balloons, or you may prefer a more comfortable waiting experience. Number nine is balloon material. Nylon, hyperlast, or silver coated hyperlast. This is an invisible feature that most likely will not be important for your flight. Which material a balloon is made of has no bearing on the ride. However, if there is a problem, the stronger material is less likely to tear. A company that spends more for better material will most likely charge more for your flight. Is the latest, safest technology important to you? If so, you should ask about this. Better material costs money, which means the price is affected, and silver-coated hyperlast is the best material available. Number 10 is insurance. This is a hard one to gauge because you cannot know until something happens, and 99% of the time nothing happens. Regardless, it is worth checking to see what insurance the company has. If this concerns you, ask them what happens if an accident occurs. Of course, this does not have to mean a fatal crash. What happens if you get hurt climbing out of the balloon, or if the transport van crashes on the way to or from the balloon? If they are wary of answering your questions, you may want to choose another company. This, of course, is another factor in the price of your hot air balloon ride. Insurance is not cheap. Number 11, how do they get their customers? There are four ways to get customers. Travel agents, direct phone or internet, hotels, and tour guides. How they get their customers determines a lot about how they view their guests. The reality is that most people do not even know which company they are flying with until they arrive at the balloon. The choice was made for them. The real customer for the balloon company is the middleman. Of course, if the passengers are not happy, they will complain to the middleman and that company will change if they get enough complaints. 
However, the companies that get a big chunk of their guests through direct reservations will be more sensitive to the opinions of their passengers. By asking and finding an answer to the question of how they get reservations, you'll learn a lot about how the company targets their business. Let me affirm that all the companies want their passengers to have a good experience. I'm just pointing out that some companies are focused on individuals and some more on groups. Also, within this, your hotel will be willing to make a reservation with any company you choose. They usually have a company they prefer, but if you give a certain company, they'll honor your wishes. This generally does not change the price for you. Number 12 is their unique selling proposition. Ask what sets the company apart from all the other companies. I asked this question to each company and was surprised to hear their answers. Some of them have a clear vision and are able to articulate it well. Others do not. Beware of companies that answer this question by disparaging the other companies. I found that companies sometimes do this, but rarely were they correct about other companies. Each one of these features costs something. The high quality companies charge more because they've spent more on each of these features. Maybe this is important to you, maybe not. But now you can make an informed decision. You can learn more about hot air ballooning and everything else about Cappadocia at www.captivatingcappadocia.com. Which features are important to you? Please leave a comment below.